He should have done hot. He should have did hot tub time machine too. He fucked up. Mm. Welcome to Four <laughs> Brewers. My name is John Holzer, and as always, I'm joined by Jason Harris, and we're here for the final time with uh, Kyle and Tim. Oh, from... final time! Yeah, final time. It's the in. final time. Wow! Yeah, that's uh, nicely synced. The final time <laughs> for this session, I should say. Thanks for having us, by the way. Uh, yeah, no thank problem. you. Thanks for coming down. I know it was a long drive. You guys had a long drive home. It's been a hoot. I get to stay here. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been fun. Uh, is there anything we should know about Untapped going from here on out? Download <laughs> it. Do it. Like anything cool coming up? Uh, news? Um, They're like, nah. I mean, <laughs> it's it's. I feel like you're prying. Here. I don't know. I'm you're just trying to lead questions. it, and it's not working out so well. Oh, well, uh, you can say what you want. Or There's, don't. I mean, so speaking specifically about the our main products you know web and app we have an ios and android app and um we work tirelessly uh monthly to put out useful releases for folks and we're always looking for feedback again like i've I've said in in the past episodes um we're very community driven and we're trying to incorporate as much of the community as possible into the the app and so we live and die by your word and the feedback that we hear from users and so what we want to do is uh, incorporate as much of that as we possibly can whether that's badge voting whether that is uh, feedback about the app you can leave app store reviews i look at literally every single app store review that we have out there oh, so that's brutal as, man as those come i mean it's some it, some are pretty entertaining it's it's pretty great actually to get international reviews ha- has really changed my perception on the beer wor- world at large mm-hmm. uh, being able to see that you can get very very regional local craft beers but use our app to find that in belgium in netherlands in japan you know all over the world is very humbling for sure hey that that raises a legitimate question that i want that we've talked about before um whatever happened to all those like weird southeast asian untapped users that were like just indonesia get, man yeah just like getting badges like <laughs> as a game the badge jumpers oh yeah yeah like it, i remember there was a time so many I, people checked into my homebrew yeah i heard they got like instance <laughs> off or something but it was like for a while it was like any beer you had there would be like a bunch of random like oh, if, yeah. you're, if you're gonna gamify something there's gonna be somebody who s- breaks the game right they're yeah. gonna they're gonna go but, in and try and cheat it but the thing was it wasn't just us those I know, I know someone who was in that like crew, and that it was anything that had badges, Foursquare, anything. It was all about who could get it first. And as far as where those people went, I mean, I think the um, I think the hype of like earning badges kind of died down in that area. But I mean, people still do it, and it still yeah. happens. But you're talking like you had people literally like spoofing their geo coordinates just yeah. to unlock stuff. It was pretty nuts. We um we used to use them in the early on tap days. I would be like the fuck beers do you got to get to get this badge i'm like well let's go find one of those uh, indonesia users that got it and, uh, <laughs> what did they check it to? <laughs> yeah we've been trying to incorporate a little bit more of that i think right now the one that stands out the most is our wheel of styles badge which you earn different levels based on the different types of styles that you have that we list in the app um those styles are also community driven so they're not going to be like just beer judging styles they are going to be things that our community has voted on things like brute ipas and new england doubles and you know things that are hot and new and folks want to see beers that are in that category Mm -hmm. um so our wheel of styles badge incorporates those and you can see a breakdown basically of ones i have had and ones i have not had so that you can find find those beers use the find it function to find ones that are going to get you more levels to that badge Cool. Um, yeah, it's that one is for how many different styles you've tried. Correct. Yeah. Yep. I mean, uh, Untapped. I, I reminisce a lot on like since I mean, I mean, it's I've known you the whole time. Basically, yeah. you've been Untapped. I, and I, since I, you were you were you guys you and the, the rest of the New Brew Thursday crew were like key in getting us known in SoCal for sure. And I remember like we did like a, a it wasn't a Skype, but it was like a sit down over the internet like somewhere with some chatting app about like. Okay, we want to incorporate rating into rating a rating system into the app. Like, what should we do? And it was me and Steven, and I think Matt was here too. And 
We talked about that before you guys had ratings. <laughs> I remember like before you guys had like the smooth iOS scrolling. Oh yeah. Jay Price would always bitch and moan about. I don't know if you know Jay Price. Mm -hmm. uh, he's Nocturne One or Nocturnal. Uh, I don't know how you say his name exactly. Uh, but he's still a good friend of mine. But he was he's he was a heavy untapped user. And he's like, I can't wait till they can actually scroll with iOS. <laughs> oh yeah, because it was web in the beginning. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, it was a web app, and even when you like kind of were native but wasn't quite native, Pseudo. it was like a port of the web app yeah. to the native platform. It still wasn't, and it's like, gee, give him a break, dude. They're like <laughs> two people like making a fucking app. Calm down. <laughs> Like all of this history with Untapped, like is I, I'm very nostalgic towards Untapped. Oh yeah, and to see what Untapped has become now when you merged with uh, it was uh, Next Class. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that was really cool. I, doing the whole like the, you made like a special app for scanning beer barcodes to get oh, well, for all the of that data yeah. into the before, system before we uh, merged. Before well, no, before we decided to put the barcode scanner in the the it was like okay, well we want to add a barcode scanner, right? But we need to get barcodes in here how do we do that to actually build up a database? So we went to all the moderators and we built a literally a develop, like a, a moderator only app to scan barcodes. And we had people going to their store and scanning like their entire beer cabinet. Did it work as oh, well? Yeah. As, oh, it did. Okay. It built up the database so fast. Cause I know I, I, I was, I was like, like heavily into it for like at least three days. And it was just like, <laughs> I can't keep up with this. Like, yeah. There but you, like, you gamified collection our data collection basically exactly in a, in a very simple way but and there um, were people who just went all out. like i remember i went to whole foods at one point and i was just i spent like probably a good half hour or longer just like scanning enter scan enter just because i was like okay well i may as well do something yeah, yeah. It, it built up a really good solid starting point yeah that, that i thought that was a really cool idea and like when i i it, even when i downloaded the app i'm like what exactly is this like what am i supposed to do with it? and it wasn't really a like clear because I think this is like it was a test flight app, but it was before Apple acquired test flight. So it was still kind yeah. of jinky. And yeah. it was, it was, I don't know, it was, it was, it was all fun. Um, and like I said, before Untapped had photos, like that was my number one thing. It's like, we need to have photos. Oh, yeah. Like that's such a big part of it. And now you see the popularity of like Instagram, <sighs> it's, like it's where photos huge. are everything on the internet. Yep. And, uh, when you finally got photo, I'm just like kind of running through, going the... through the history of untapped where you started off as a web app and now you're this actual like full fledged iOS and Android app. It's, it's really cool to see where you guys came from and where you're at now. So, um, as this is your last show with us, I just wanted to kind of like summarize all of that. Oh, like thanks, it's, man. it's been cool. Like being a part of that whole thing. Oh, yeah. Like, especially, you know, with you and uh, seeing you guys, like your, the tour you went on with Greg uh, <laughs> for the, like the, the anniversary thing and like the whole bottle, like, Oh God, what a shit show that was. The like, bottle logic thing. Yeah. I, I remember going there, you guys were there and I'm like, I can't even get in. Yeah. Like I probably won't see you. So, Congratulations! Bye. I'm pissed. <laughs> it was it was, <laughs> mad, it was a madhouse. The line because they were they had some gnarly releases and the line was insane. Oh, it was like a trifecta of everything that could go wrong at a brewery. Like <laughs> yeah. all of these special beers, and there's beer celebs here for a, an event that's been highly publicized. And we're doing these other beers that you never had before, also. Yeah. So and Bottle Logic doesn't have room for like a regular, not even Friday, Thursday night crowd in yeah. the tasting room. Yeah. It wasn't it was back <laughs> in the back. Like they had like barrel set up in like a Disneyland style, like even winding even line. Then, it's it's too yeah, small. Even yeah. then. I'm really looking forward to them expanding to their, it's their been next a spot. While now. Yeah. They told us about that when we interviewed them. And it's that like was a noble while too. Ago. It's Noble's kind of in the same boat. It's like that yeah. was announced over a year ago. And yep. Where's no, that? it was the what's what anniversary did they just maybe have? it was it was like years ago it was their seventh or eighth right it was two or three years ago yeah it was the nobles got five on it anniversary where they announced uh, okay the because I have the cup at home the glass at home noble uh but yeah man I, it, get get your tasting rooms bigger guys <laughs> oh. <laughs> come on <laughs> with the yeah, we need enough room to get tim and greg in there that's all oh, that's God. that's all we're get, saying get your tasting rooms I, bigger date your bottles and we'll be happy yeah that's true <laughs> and, and make all your packages smaller you know uh, unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately i wasn't able to make it out to that anaheim event i was again i think i was on the boat drinking were, a brooklyn you, lager probably yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah it's that was very surreal. I think for me, mostly, it is really surreal to see where the app has gone from the first day I signed up in 2011 to where we are today. And actually, like, being on staff now <laughs> and moving that product towards, you know, new endeavors that were never even on the roadmap. 
way back then from what? from greg telling me that'll never do anything to 100 employees i mean it's pretty <laughs> nuts yeah it's it's it, <laughs> and it's cool to see where you're at now. I will say too, anytime anything gets like acquired, there's always like a oh shit, what the fuck, what's gonna happen? And Untapped is like everything I've used it for is just as good as yeah. it ever was, and it's it, just largely better. improved, yeah. right? So um, you always get nervous. You're like, okay, how are they gonna ruin it? It's gonna be like six months, and now they're like, now this is the B part of something, some so, other app, right? So that was right. that was one hundred percent like the reason that we chose to go the route that we went um there were talks around and this was the best opportunity because the people like the people at next class like we we kind of we saw what they were doing um on their business side and it really fit well and the way that they wanted to handle everything that they, they really believed in the brand and they were like it was just the it was a perfect like we agreed on everything that we wanted it to be as opposed to just like oh hey we just want to acquire you. Like it was, it was literally like we have this business thing. You guys have this and it's a perfect fit. And we all believe in the same end goal. And that was really one of the big driving forces behind the decision. Cause yeah. it, it, and it, I think it really showed because it hasn't, while yes, it's now a, a company with employees and there are decisions that have to be made to benefit the business side. There's been a lot of focus and a lot um, put into just keeping the the users and all the people who have been here through the entire ride um happy and growing i yeah. nodded on a podcast <laughs> what was that? i just nodded on an audio show. <laughs> i know right i'm like yeah yeah, yeah. Huh? can you it's it's an audible nod that's right i uh, <laughs> head butted the microphone a couple times yeah and I, I feel like while it's it's kind of almost beating around the bush a little bit but yeah i mean it's been eight years and i made this i made this publicly known already um, but I've actually decided after eight years that it's about time I, I've started stepping away from the day to day at the company. Um, I'm I'm actually departing and just uh, just decided it was at a point where like we've built it to what it can be. We've got a really solid leadership team in place, and um, uh, Greg's still staying there, so he's still on building everything. And uh, it's just it was it was my time to kind of depart and um, take some time to recharge and focus on a few new things in my life and uh it's cool man yeah i mean it's it's a little it's a little sad because you know it's been a lot um it's it's been eight years of ups and downs and long nights and cool things and meeting great people um and now it's time to kind of let it go and see where it goes i'm very excited i'm like i have no doubt that it's going to continue to be great and um yeah i think there's was it i saw 100 employees or over 100 employees at untapped yeah now which I I always when I think of Untapped I just think of Tim. Yeah, <laughs> yep. he's the guy that works for Untapped, and if I have something to say, I just talk to him. Yeah, and, like <laughs> there it is. But a hundred people, like that's not huge at all. But like still for Untapped, like how I knew Untapped. Yeah, that's a hundred people working for Untapped. That's pretty dope. Like, yeah, and I mean, I don't you, know. and you I this is not my company, but John, I somehow do you think take... of me as your Amazon? Like you're just like when I think of Amazon, I just think of my friend Jason. I do actually. Or do you think of my? Uncle I want Jeff. your opinions on uh, the whole Eero bio, but that's for a different uh, that podcast. Like, seems like a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm in line with the privacy concerns that I've seen. Oh yeah, so up. am I. Yeah, I'm glad, yeah. I, I, I'm glad I didn't buy an Eero. Like uh, I, I, I didn't buy an Eero yeah. either. If it makes you feel better. I wish Apple would still make something, but I'm I'm not a homer on all that shit. I'm 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 halfway to selling my ring and fucking getting a nest instead because it's kind of glitchy hmm. but well not not a full-on homer going from hundreds of employees to millions of employees <laughs> that's right like, <laughs> it's, go, going, it's cool to know someone in the tech industry i guess you could say sure. but it's also closely related to what i geek out on too oh yeah so. if, and if going, you go onto like a cheese app i'll follow you i'll follow you over to that one nice. yeah all right. all right man uncheesed yeah <laughs> Write it down. Anyway. Uh, no, no, just cheesed without the E. <laughs> yes, yeah. and a D. Un unrhymed, maybe. <laughs> it's uh, C-H-E-S-S apostrophe D. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, they're... <laughs> I think Untapped grew to prominence in a in a time where like a tumblr or a it's this like web sort of 2.5 era yeah. web 2.0 yeah, era everybody like like rdo like right it was Dro like just oh, drop a fucking vowel i miss right. Like, right yeah and, and so i think there there are parts of of the untapped brand that still very much like f for me feel like it's tim and greg it's you know small team it's i feel very like it's a tight-knit group um the way that we 
also have friends on the app hasn't changed from day one, right? It's you have friends, you don't have followers, you don't have anything like that. It's all very much like reciprocal following and and building a, a group of friends in there that is not like Twitter. It's not building a social community mm-hmm. like Facebook or Twitter or those that are. It, it's the you know, year friends rating is like one of my favorite like mm-hmm, newer yep. features that came in where i'm just like yeah this is how the rest of these fucking jackalopes rate it but how do the people <laughs> i care about rate it like all right all right some some people i trust rated this beer okay one of my one of my i'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up with this one of my best sure. memories from um being a moderator for untapped and i'm not that active as a moderator i'm I'll admit, but I do dip in every now and then and change a couple things here and there that are like that's fucked up. Mods are Nazis, but, but uh, whoa! When all moderators in everywhere are oh, all okay, calm down, all Jason. Nazis, calm down. Mods new. It's kind of relevant to what we're dealing with these days. So <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> finish your um, time. No CEOs s- now. If you're on like Twitter and shit, are you done? Jack's a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Dorsey's a Nazi. <laughs> <clears throat> my bread. He's gonna take me out. Um, but uh, yeah, someone from the Lost Abbey <laughs> was complaining on uh, like Twitter or something about how this is early and untapped. I want to say like three years in, they're like, this is, or whenever moderators were like actually able to moderate, they're like, yeah, this is so messed up. This stupid fucking app. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Like everything's messed up. That that we got the Lost Abbey. This isn't this isn't Pizza Port. This isn't you know because it's Pizza Port is one company. Port Brewing is one company. The Lost Abbey is one company. And so you'd see a Lost Abbey beer listed under Port Brewing Company. Well, like they're a combo, I think, right now. Lost Abbey Port. Okay, maybe. Oh, some, some okay, thing. fine. Back then they weren't, and yeah. it was kind of like even for an end user was like, "Who are you?" I like, still think that. What is happening with your company? And so it's it's three separate brands that brew three distinctly different styles of beer, but they kind of still overlap. Does Hop Concept count as one of those three? Back then they weren't around. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like so mad. That I logged in and I spent three or four hours like fixing everything yes. on the metadata for, for like uh, the Lost Abbey to make sure everything was right. All the beer names were right. All the alcohol like ABVs were right. Everything was perfect just so I could like rub it in his face like, okay, I fixed everything, dude. What now? And no response. It is people like you that made it. And it was just, yeah. it was just like, you know, these guys are, back then it was still a, a very, fairly small group of people, I think, yeah. you know, doing the thing and untapped. And it's like, calm down. Like these, they're doing their best. Like they're not <laughs> like beer experts and this isn't like beer advocate where it's like, yeah. they've got this whole staff of people that moderate everything. Like it just pissed me off. But I took a lot of pride in that. Cause even, even Yvonne, my girlfriend, I was like, look what I just did. Like I got like 50 beers so like, proud. all in order. Yeah. Like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I'm gonna drink a beer. Well, so. see, that's the thing with moderators. Like we we rely so heavily on on their contributions, their continuing contributions to the Untapped database, and there's it goes so far to building trust with users who feel like, yeah, no, that's that's the beer I'm looking at right now. Like that's the one. Um, we wouldn't have that without their help. Well, so. Especially with everything being so like hyper local now, like yeah. you you have to have we need someone those regionalized there ones. Yeah, that's like, do you know what's going on with this beer? And like, th- thankfully, we do have regionally like set uh, moderators in different mm-hmm. countries, different regions of their countries. It's very helpful. Oh yeah, and I'm thinking just the United States, but all over the world. I mean, yeah, yeah. with how many breweries east. there are, like. Uh, there's a large chunk of them that they don't even you can't even go to their website and get a list of the beers they have yep. right like what's on their chalkboard today may that may be the only fucking public record of that beer right <laughs> yep yep all right so awesome that was a good untapped closing out discussion uh, we have yet to talk about this beer. Uh, the beer we're drinking right now is actually from Bear Republic. They sent this to us. Who are we checking in with right now, John? Uh, Bear Republic. <laughs> Brewing Co. <laughs> checking in there. I I would say Bear Republic Racer Five is just a go to for me always. If you want to talk about flagships again, yeah, for, first Racer I, Five, first IPA I ever yeah. had Racer Five. It's still a good IPA. It's still yeah. I didn't do that one because no. we we had done a um, we did a show where we did a bunch of like kind of classic. It was kind of the flagship show concept, but all IPA. Mm-hmm. Remember we did a blind show like, and I was like, we did Racer Five on that show. Like, yeah. Our thoughts on Racer Five haven't changed. <laughs> Uh, this one's uh, their Sonoma Tart with Guava and Passion Fruit. Uh, it's 5.2%. It's sour ale, uh, brewed with Guava and pra- Passion Fruit, obviously. Um, I like this one. So Guava. I I typically don't like Guava because it stinks to me, and this stinks. Uh, as stink. far as like the Guava 
character goes. Like, I get that stinky guava character. If you like guava, this is right up your alley. Um, <laughs> it just sounds like you're like, um, but it sounds like it's gone all the way around to the other way. You're like, ah, oh, give me some of that stinky, stinky guava. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> it's like you, you've gone all the way around to enthusiasm. Like, ah, oh, some of that stinky guava. I li- well, I like it because it's like guava heavy. Uh, mm. I don't personally like guava, but I think for someone who has never tried a guava beer or knows what guava is, buying this, it might throw them off if they're like me where they, they're like, what's that stink? It comes off sulfury to me, mm. like guava. I don't know what it is, but um, I love it's, guava it's there. Beer. This I love guava and beer, and I like it in this. What do you get Maybe. on the aroma? Because like, like I said, to me, it literally stinks. It's gone now. Oh, well, I that I was took a long a, talk. We, yeah, I, <laughs> I tried. I, I tried a little bit when it was colder, and I think it held up. It, like I enjoyed it a bit more after being freshly poured, as opposed to letting it sit out for mm-hmm. our entire conversation there. But overall, I mean, it's it's pretty drinkable. Um, it doesn't. It's not anything that I write home about. Um, I think it, it's it, it's definitely where you want it to be, as far as like a tart fruit beer kind of to to go back to when we were talking about the uh omegong fruit beer Mm -hmm. i was expecting something more in line with this and we got something that was very lightly fruited where this Mm -hmm. has a big fruit forward character Mm -hmm. yeah it's not that sour um it's kind of like the the game of thrones omegong beer that we had uh but i think that's probably for the best because if you had this like massive guava nose with like a, a puckery sourness, that might be just too much. It's got a little bit of acid from the fruit, I think, but yeah, it's not. It's super, enough. It's, it's, not it's super tart. Sour. Like I mean, yeah. much like the name, it's more tart than it is sour. Right. I think. Yeah, I think it works well though. Like, it's um, it, it definitely probably would have worked better a little colder. <laughs> yeah, I, it's got sort of that like unripe fruit flavor to me for some reason. I don't know if that's a a product of like the fact that it's tropical fruits, and I don't. I don't really have tropical fruits ever right. uh, here in, in Southern California. It's more like we get the juice. We get the pog juice. We get the, you know, right. whatever guava flavored nectar thing. Um, and it's it has almost that artificial, like, over overly done, overripe character usually to it. And when it's paired with something that's tart, it has this underripe fruit flavor to it. And so I, I'm like, I don't, I don't know how to parse guava with underripe and tart and things yeah. like that. No, I get that, though. When you point it out, I'm like, I, I am pulling that character out of the beer. Well, mm. luckily, they sent two bottles, so I think I'm going to do one on YouTube for a review. Even though I don't like guava, I know what guava is, and I can appreciate it and for what, what it is. What it is of. And I can overlook it, because I think that overall, <laughs> this is a pretty good beer for being like a mass market, sour, quote unquote, beer. So easier than ever to thanks for the beer tell your friends about a sour thanks, beer public have them find something they can actually buy and so now <laughs> oh boy that's a jump <laughs> that's a we're, that's a double jump we're gonna drink all stouts at this hey point. that's a that's a good bottle logic joke double uh point. double jump mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. double jump they did a whole series the konami code series where it was oh, yeah, yeah the button button mashing yeah. basically i Those only got good. a couple i think i had at least I think I had at least three of those. Thanks to you and a couple other people. You sent me a couple. That was also thanks to Bob Vreeland oh. from Bottle Logic, oh, who yeah. is Driver Bob, who gave us those cans. Oh, nice. Who was also a supporter on Patreon. So thank you, Bob. That's those the are... only way I get cool releases is like homie hookups. <laughs> Speaking of which, I had the cool release from Highland Park. Um, and I was like, we should do it on the show. And word on the street is that they are mad infected. Oh, so, the, uh... the barley wines. Yeah, the, the don't, don't, drink don't drink beer ones. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah. So they're like, hey, if you haven't picked it up, we're not doing pickups anymore. We're going to figure something out. And Man. they're like, basically, we don't know what we're going to do. But I'm like, I don't want to try the beer. Like, I'm sure they'll do something cool to make up for it. Like, I'm not worried about that. But I'm just bummed. I was like, oh, I wanted to actually try them. Mm. Yeah. Ooh. And I'm not a big fan of don't drink beer. But like to collab with Highland Park like that, it sucks that that happened to their beer because that's pretty epic. Don't, don't drink beer is <laughs> wait the, who was it again highland park and don't drink beer um like, like the internet guy like website barley wine is life oh god i'm so out of the loop oh well, don't drink really beer are. is the internet's <laughs> finest purveyor of beer-based memes oh okay what's the name of their podcast uh, uh malt couture malt couture yeah oh, jesus <laughs> so all right um, so beer again <laughs> so this is from a brewery called unfiltered art um, 
this is a Neapolitan stout they did with uh, Bottle Logic Brewing. It smells so cool. Eleven uh, percent, uh, and it's a Neapolitan stout. That's all I really know about it. Um, it smells like it. Like it's like it smells like unwrapping one of those Neapolitan ice cream sandwiches. Yeah. So mm, yeah, here's more, more, more chocolate. Are we talking about the ice cream? Like, so when I hear Neapolitan, I have two things in my head. The ice cream, which is awesome, yeah. or the little candies, which are the worst. What are not, the not the candies. Yeah, the, the, candies. the little Brax Neapolitan yeah. candies. Those are disgusting. They're super fucking gross. Um, They're like a re- small rectangle, right? Yeah. 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 Um, no, uh, see, I'm thinking I like mean, Neckos, like like taking a whole Necco wafer stack of the mint and the yeah. chocolate. No, no, and the, no, no, this no, is okay. this is the ice cream sandwich. Yeah, this. I think this was an. I, oh yeah. no, Jason. No. no. Oh. In the I chat. Know those, those yeah, I know like, what those are. Does it seem as if you got like a little caramel? <laughs> <laughs> is this is this Halloween in the Inland Empire? Is oh, this something what? that I that I missed what? out on? No, man. These are a thing. They're like grandma candy. <laughs> okay. Uh. Ha- Halloween sad in the IE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you bitches. I was waiting for it. I'm from LA. I'm from Orange County. And we're going to the IE. Where they have Neapolitan candy. <laughs> Hon, you'll never guess where we went today. The Inland Empire. And we got our cars back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Did you get so, stabbed? No, not is, shockingly. No. So my first, my first gut on this is that, like, I don't it. It comes off to me almost as artificial, like, and I don't know why. Like, it's it's, it's like the prominent because it's strawberry. Neapolitan you know, beer. Is it the strawberry? Is yeah, that the okay? So that's out. maybe that's it's it because the strawberry smells like strawberry candy and not like strawberry. The fruit. It smells like opening up a special K with the freeze dried strawberries in oh, okay. it yeah. to me. Like it's got that like, like, uh, but it also strawberry. smells chocolatey and yeah. sweet. So right. you get that and whole malt. vibe. Yeah, yeah, and the malt, like the breadiness of like that that co- uh, like cho- strawberry chocolate bread. bread. It tastes yeah. like the candy. Does it really? Yeah. I wish we well, had the candies now. Um, it, it's the more Italian kind of Neapolitan flavor, right? Like a thing. It's a thing. It's like you know if, a little bit about. If it. you took it, if you took Neapolitan, added like some mm. sort of coffee roast to it because of the. Like, it's very good. yeah. It's super roasty. It it does not taste like you would expect from the aroma. It's a little more. It's it it leans more into just what you would expect from like a sweet stout. It does, but it also for huh. me works. No, you know, like, like yeah, I think the the flavor definitely follows the aroma. Like you get this mm. really big strawberry sweet yeah. aroma, yeah. But it's also backed up on the flavor too. And roast on the f- I don't get a lot of roast at all. Like I don't get, a, but at the same time, I don't get like a lot a lot of chocolate maltiness from it. Not chocolate malt, but like big malty chocolate flavors. Well, when I think of chocolate, I usually think of like a, you know, 85% dark, like where you're getting the bitterness and you're also getting sort of the like roasty chocolate-ness to it. Okay. It's, it's not going right. to be, it's going to be more bitter on, on the chocolate side. This is, this is leaning more on the, um, the fruited coffee for me where you're, you have like that Ethiopia flavor to it. It's light and bright okay. and with a tiny, like a hint of acid in it. And then you have like that strawberry flavor that is sort of coating all of it. The the flavor, huh. I, I think the flavor I'm pulling from this, which also is the one in the candy. Are you guys getting any coconut out of this beer? Mm-mm. No. I'm getting like a coconut finish. I think Kyle broke it down pretty well. Like that was pretty in depth. Like that's <laughs> seriously like the the coffee thing. Like now that you say, oh, I get this coffee thing where it's like a fruity coffee, but it's still. You know, this other thing backs it up. That, yeah, because I looked at this kind of one dimensionally where it was like, smells like Neapolitan, tastes like Neapolitan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a Neapolitan beer. They did it. But when you break it down, like, I see with it's, Neapolitan, it's more complex. with Neapolitan, I want, and maybe this is just like my, me trying to get ice cream in it is just like more vanilla. Mm-hmm. Like, give me, give yeah. me like straight up Madagascar vanilla overload on it with hints of, strawberry and chocolate and you know like kind of this is definitely on the strawberry forward side i i'm totally on board with what you're saying yeah Yeah. so i i i think the bottle logic beers tend to lean more into the vanilla spectrum when you're looking at things like their their dark star series and you know ones that are they're very uh you know highly touted Mm -hmm. uh bottled series but i this is this is really interesting. I've never had anything from my Untitled Art before. Neither have I. I, I saw this at our local bottle shop, La Bodega. Um, 
and I just I was like, this is it, honestly, they're, it they're, had a bottle logic lo- bottle logics logo on it, and it was like, I'm just gonna buy it. Ooh, their in, their Wisconsin. Instagram is so good. Uh, Untitled Art. It's it is. Is it really? Yeah, it's a real good. Yeah, I've never heard of them until like I bought this beer. So, um, (laughs) again, I think this is one of those beers where being very critical of it. Uh, if you just bought it and drank it and smelled it, like you'd get Neapolitan. Had well, that's the thing. Like, had they called it something different, uh, you know, coffee stout. Uh, with vanilla or strawberry coffee stout or you know something that isn't it's not Neapolitan. as hype as Neapolitan though it's, it is not as hype but I think that's the point like what your memory of Neapolitan is versus what Jason's sure. memory of yeah, Neapolitan yeah. is it brings up these two different flavors one is like ah, no I don't like this flavor and one is like this is this is like this is my grandma's you know Italian ice cream or whatever mm. that's I think it it evokes more than the beer itself can speak for. So it's it's a really interesting, uh, really interesting way to like just name it and and a, this tastes like a collab from Bottle Logic. That's the other thing. Like usually when you get a collab with someone, it's hard to sort of differentiate. Like what was their take on this? Why did they need to collab with Bottle Logic for this? And I a hundred percent get it because Bottle Logic's dark beers all kind of have this vibe to them. Um, and I don't. I've never had anything from Untitled Art, but I would be curious to know what part of that they sort of incorporated right. into theirs. Apparently, they're from Wisconsin. Yep. Ain't that something? Uh, Wanaki. And you had to do something to get like Bottle Logic's attention. Like, yeah. And they're just not going to collab with anyone. I mean, <laughs> or they just like met at a fest and thought each other were cool. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> They're just like, we were all at Wakefest. and uh... Yeah, seeing photos of the Bottle Logic folks over at Cerebral, I was like, okay, cool. I guess I'm not going to go there after I leave GABF. That's going to be just for the folks in Denver. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, I like the beer. I I mean, I wish it wasn't 11% because holy shit, but. Uh, yeah. Apparently, like. it's 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 interesting. This brewery's whole shtick, looking at their top beers, is all pastry stuff. Yeah, it makes sense. Chocolate, vanilla, maple, imperial stout, hazelnut, imperial stout, Neapolitan stout, Florida Weiss, waffle stout, horchata stout. Ooh, horchata stout. Yum. Milk, strawberry milkshake IPA, tiki milkshake. So strawberry can be done very badly. I I do think it, it, there's. I think it's usually done very badly. Yeah, <laughs> it, I, it comes off very artificial. Most of the time, and that's or, why, or not at all. Smell wise, it it was a little like, yeah. But I I think I'd buy that. Like I w- I would actually buy that, keep it around for a while, and be like, do I want something super desserty? Yeah. After dinner, yeah. I think it'd be fun to see what happens over time with this beer. I mean, <laughs> it could turn into a complete mess, or it might turn into something else. I wonder if they used actual strawberries. Like was it was mm. it like a puree or is it like that that concentrate? I feel kind like of thing? it's flavoring of some yeah, sort. Yeah, because the way it comes through in the nose and in the flavor just seems like it was over the top, and they miscalculated on the, it, the strawberry. Again, I, I got strawberry candy, not strawberry the fruit. Like right. it, it's like those again to go to old people candy, like those little <laughs> strawberry candies. Wait, that wait. your grandma would have in a dish. The ones that actually had the like strawberry on the wrapper yeah, yeah, yeah. and the little jelly inside. Mm-hmm. Those are amazing. It's, don't diss those. It smells like that, but it, I could see it. Yeah, but they don't. The flavor of that isn't the flavor of a strawberry. It's like the oh, flavor yeah. of red. It's a, it's the flavor right? of strawberry. It's candy. Flavor of yeah. red. <laughs> so up next, we have a, a beer from Oscar Blues. Uh, shout out to Matt Becker. Uh, this is a twelve point two percent Imperial Stout. Um, this is a collab with Cigar City Brewing, and um, it works out because uh, Oscar Blues and Cigar City are both part of the Canarchy uh, family of breweries, which three weavers. <laughs> it's like literally the same employees at the same brewery, so they're like, hey, I mean, we're Matt has told us today. Matt works at uh, Oscar Blues and he brews High Lie, so I mean. So like they collaborated. They're like, "Hey, uh, it was an email collab." You got your peanut butter and my chocolate. You got your chocolate and my peanut butter. They were in the break room, and they're like, "Hey, what if we did the beer with this and that?" And they're like, "But we can't. You work for Oscar Blues, <laughs> and I'm on the uh, Dale Brothers side." But we or uh, whatever. <laughs> it fell apart. Dale's, yeah, yeah. Fourth show, man. Fourth show. So uh, we're this on is... different sides of the house. We'll collab, man. 
again, uh, it's a collab with Cigar City. Uh, this Ooh. beer was aged in whiskey and brandy barrels with mm-hmm. figs, Whoa. dates, mm-hmm. and a wood I've never heard of, uh, Ambarana Wood. Oh, that's what the beer's named after. Yeah. That's a really, really weird smell. I, I had, had one. I, I've never smelled that before. Like oh. last week. I get a little construction site. I get cinnamon. L- like sawdust, you're yeah, saying? A like little, sort like, of a little construction site. Oh, it, that's it a good is, descriptor. Like, <laughs> like, I know what that smells like. <laughs> like, like walking into a Home Depot <laughs> yeah. almost where you've got sort of this like fresh cut lumber wood. Yard, yeah, yeah, lumber yard smell. I mean, you can describe certain beers as oaky, right? But because this is sort of its own, uh, what looks to be a semi-tropical type of tree, I'm curious to know wood spirals is kind of an interesting way to describe oh, it. It's native to- wood spirals are basically the wood, but they literally carve it into a spiral. <laughs> yeah. Got it, okay. And so you get a lot of surface area it's, in the, okay. with the liquid. So, so it's like it like oaking it, basically, but yeah. not with chips. It's you're not putting spirals. it in a barrel. You're putting wood into the beer. Into the beer itself. Yeah, yeah. spirals are kind of your most, like, bang for the buck as far as how much wood is touching the... Like, if you took a piece of wood and just threw it in there, you'd also get the same effect, but it would take longer to get the wood flavor. But if it's a spiral, it's in a spiral shape, so it's like more surface area. So Got it. Okay. For, yeah, yeah, yeah. for those interested, it's native to Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Paraguay, and Peru. Huh. The tree, that is, not the beer. I wonder, like, how do you decide? You're like, I'm going to start using some of that wood in a beer. Right? The s- same way anybody else does. What's this? Okay, let's throw it in. Yeah, I guess it's, so. It's got a little bit of like a farmer's Somebody market. Somebody going lick a tree. Yeah, like a farmer's <laughs> market vibe where you're like, where'd you get this? I don't know. I just had a bunch of persimmons. I guess I'll give it to you. You want to brew with it? <laughs> sure. I I kind of like that You know, serendipity sort of like hmm. maybe we'll make this, but they canned it. And what's the quick? <laughs> has anybody, have you tried it yet? Uh, I have, yes. What's before. going on in the back? I'm Boons I've tried it before, but, back, not, but not not currently. But now I'll take a sip. There's something in the uh, the aftertaste. It's really interesting. There is a nice, like, kind of sweet character, but mm-hmm. um, not like cleanly sweet, like a really rich good. kind of <laughs> yeah. uh, rich brown sugar sweetness to it. Is that the figs? Well, yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, f- there's figs on the nose, and there's also a like a figgy sweetness. Figgy. To- like kind of uh, sticky almost like but not in a you don't get a lot of booze from it i'm I'm not tasting a whole bunch of alcohol on it and it's 12 percent. yeah it's pretty amazing i'm yeah. gonna i'm actually i'm gonna i'm gonna venture a guess that for some reason the canarchy got a shipment of this tree because three weavers also has a porter oh that makes sense <laughs> yeah because they're part of canarchy bulk order they're, also uh, against the grain did one and yeah i'm seeing that there's a tag thing. here it's interesting. Are they part of Canarchy too? No, just, oh. a, just like anything. Like all of a sudden, like fucking Cigar City did an apple brandy beer one time, and then all of a sudden everyone's like, "Oh, apple brandy, apple brandy, apple brandy." Yeah, it kind of spreads like a virus. Yeah. 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 Um, I think Oscar Blues makes excellent stouts. I mean, Cigar City and Oscar Blues both make awesome stouts. So mm-hmm. right off the bat, you you have two breweries that know what they're doing when it yeah. comes to making dark, rich beers. Um. There is How these ingredients play into the final product, I have no idea. It's so hard because I'm so unfamiliar with any of them in beer. Yeah, right. Right? Like This is very unique. I've had figs in stuff. Dates, I'm not. I haven't eaten really a lot of dates in my life. I mean. Um, and, yeah, the wood, who the fuck knows? Dates right? and figs and dates and figs and dates and so uh, I just hear it's, sugar it's, dates and figs like from Aladdin every time. For me, you you sugar said Tim dates and pistachios. Tim and Kyle both said like Kyle. I think you said construction site, and Tim was like Home Depot or no, other way around. But, but either okay. way, yeah. Um, I don't get that at all. Mm. Yeah, I get either. cinnamon. I get massive. I, I can get chocolate. Ci- cinnamon sure, chocolate. on the nose. Yeah, yeah. I um, I'm not saying you're wrong, but. I want to experience just something I know what a construction site smells well, like, god damn it. Maybe well yeah, you're the you're the key person here. I mean maybe it's just maybe it needs was, more cement. I think it was just thinking wood like wood and something about it just it has that like I don't know, there's well, something about Well when you say it. wood and trees and sort of um like earthiness, I don't get any of that necessarily from this. I do get a lot of roast and a lot of coffee and a lot of sticky like fig sweetness. When when we were talking about 
sort of the guava beer and the underripe fruit. This is the other side of the spectrum for me. This is an overripe, very sweet fig that when you tear yeah. into it, it's just like it's figs will get this sort of like uh sugary coating to them sometimes. It kind of is on the cusp of like a very, very dry fig where it's a a like Spanish style one. And then there's the just it's been on the tree way too long and like maybe a bird got to it or, you know, it's got this like kind of just over sweetness to it. And that's yeah. that's what I definitely get from this. No roast uh, in, in a fig. Obviously, you're not going to get like a smoked fig or anything. And like I that. don't get roast from this at all. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this manages to have, like, compared to, like, a really caramely big, like, in the pantheon of big beers, right, like, this doesn't fit the character of, like, a big caramely, like, a barley wine or, like, an sure. old ale. Um, it, it still is stouty, but there's definitely not a bitterness or, like, there's not much of any sort of roasty character to it. Mm. Um, just a lot of really, like, rich, sweet flavors that actually work pretty well together. It doesn't taste like dessert per se. No. Yeah, no. Or or in like an old old world kind of dessert. Like if you do like some sort of historical recipe where they're like, yeah, you use these weird ingredients and this is the peak dessert in 1749. And you're I, like, wow. I feel like it almost ends on a savory note. Yeah. A little bit. It, like as opposed to the previous one where it literally ends on like a sweet sugary it was dessert a note. The, it was a pastry stout, the oh, last one. Okay, yeah. mm, fine. I mean, <clears throat> it was it was meant to be like a a candy like uh, or like a, a pie kind of like you know sure. a pastry stout. It is supposed to the taste like something. It, it doesn't <laughs> exactly. linger though. No, well, maybe that's maybe that's the difference where you get like the upfront sweetness and then it doesn't it doesn't sit there and like a pastry stout would. It's just like. You know, you're you, it, it is it is definitely dessert. This maybe, is not lingering at maybe all. Maybe it's just me, but it, I feel like it's leaving like a salty, savory at the salty. end. Oh, that's maybe not salty, but like it's it's something at the very end that's lingering on my tongue. Like a Sleep. like a meat, like sort of a yeah. Maillard reaction Kinda, sty yeah. style umami. You, you almost. Sure. It's like it's like everything on a cheese plate that isn't cheese in yeah. like. Mixed together. <laughs> See, that's the this thing. Like date, dates, what? And, dates and figs. Oh, do... so like the the. Okay, I get it. All like right. the dates, like the honey, yeah. the board, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> the board. The board. <laughs> <laughs> just just take the plate. Ah, yeah. It's like you like blended all that and you ate it. They're like someone ate all the cheese off this plate. They're like, we'll just blend the rest of it. And they're like, oh, it's actually pretty legit. Yeah, <laughs> this would be I really good with with like a um a manchego. Like a some sort of really kind of hard, dry, crusty kind of Spanish style I cheese. I see that. Yeah. I would love that with this. I'll eat any I mean, even something there. like a blue cheese. Like a mm, blue would be. See, I like blues with double IPAs and triple IPAs. There's something about the funkiness of a blue that gets cleansed really well with a like almost fruity and. Uh, effervescent double IPA with the sweetness that just kind of like blasts you and then you're like okay I'll go in for more like the biscuity and the the funk from the cheese itself it's it's a I don't know I don't know if that's a classic pairing but th I that think seems it is. to do really well with but me. I also think like for stouts like like blue cheeses um when you're like this is a big stout yeah like big like not only in terms of alcohol but like flavors and everything you're getting I think <clears throat> The blue cheese is being as sharp as it usually is. Tends will will like kind of cut out a lot of those flavors you're getting from the adjuncts and kind of maybe lift up the more malty aspects of the beer. Yeah. And um, I don't know. I'm not a, a cheese pairing beer expert. <laughs> I just know what I know from Bill. And uh, we've done many uh, pairings with uh, blue cheeses, and this seems like a prime candidate for that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, but it's a great beer. Like it's just really good. Yeah. Like especially for the the ABV. Like I wish it was lower, but I mean, for for something that lies outside of my standard range and really gets weird, I'm enjoying it. This is a can you could sell her. Definitely. There's That's... nothing in this can that you need to drink fresh. Right. Like it it could probably age well over time. Um, That's one of the things though. Like I I actually enjoy sharing this 12 ounce can with you guys because I a 12 ounce of this. I'd be done. It may done be for the too night. much yeah. for me. Oh, like, I opened a can and I didn't finish it. Yeah. Like I had half of the, the can and was like, that's enough. Being able to share it, I think, <laughs> is is ideal for, for this beer in particular. I think any beer over 10%, I have a, I'm going to have a really hard time um, drinking more than even half of it, honestly. Like yeah. it's just too much. The flavors are too big. Uh, the whole thing just gets kind of 
overwhelming and tiring to, after a while. And they're made to be shared, I think. Which is why I'm like smaller servings, twelve ounce can, perfect. Thank you, thank yeah. you for not giving me a seven fifty of this. Four twelve you know? ounce cans. Oh, how yeah. how many ounces was the little buddy that we covered, Kyle? That was twelve ounces. No, not the little buddy. The, oh, uh, eight. Was it's it one eight? of those like real shorties of yeah, we the should, like some brewery. Um, where was they at a? I can't remember exactly, but we covered a brewery. It's Hopewell. Hopewell. So Hopewell out of Chicago is doing this. Um, Get my headphones on. Hope out of Chicago is doing this, uh, like eight ounce little, f- like kind of same same girth of, like of an this. a twelve diameter. Ounce can. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. Sorry, <laughs> don't you apologize. Know, you know what I'm saying? Girth. <laughs> I was told by a local brewery that if you have like a lot of the equipment that can do the sixteen ounce cans, can do those as well. Really? But well, yeah. You just got to raise up the. The but I think platform. was it was it trustworthy? They were telling it was us Chris. Like, it was the Chris. cans themselves, though, because they're like kind of a weird specialty item, are expensive and they come in yeah. like a weird amount where you have to like make a real big commitment to them. The last version but, of a beverage that I remember th- getting in a small uh, can like that is Jones Soda. Jo- yeah. Jones Soda did these like monster series at Target way back when that they would have little faces printed on them. That's the last thing I remember having in that size. I would love an eight ounce beer. Like that sounds perfect for me, well, especially oh, for totally. something like for this. this. Yeah, you know, if uh, this was four eight ounce cans, that would be so cute and so perfect. <laughs> like, <laughs> it'd be great. <laughs> Ahead yeah. of their time. Imagine the Instagram. Like you're holding. It's like this little beer. Oh my god! It's, it's, it's perfect. perfect. It's to, it's cool like format. But to give it's a company expensive. props who I always shit on. Ahead of their time. Do you remember years ago when Rogue had those tiny bottles? Yeah. They had some of their big beers. It'd be like their big barley wine, and it was in like a eight or a ten ounce bottle. Yeah, yeah. Those oh, those things. I um, felt I felt shorted back in the day when I got one of those size bottles. I think that's probably why they stopped doing them, and then they started doing really big bottles. <laughs> I think they were kind of ahead of the curve. Sure. Thinking, yeah. Oh, this is a thirteen percent beer. Let's put it in a smaller bottle because who wants to drink twelve ounces of this? And you're and- like. But oh, that was 12? like 2009 well, when people were just like, "I want as many ounces of 12 percent as you can get." And, and now, and now you have major craft breweries putting out locale, easy drinking, Honestly, health if, conscious if, things. If, if they took that same like bottle size and put it in a four pack, it'd probably sell fine. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm getting four of these. Perfect. I, this is a 13 percent I mean, beer. Like to to flip it, like um, a friend of ours, like years ago, I remember they were like kind of you know in our nucleus or in our. Radius, so they would get craft beer through that, but they weren't really craft beer people. Then it was like, oh yeah, we went to a whole bunch of breweries in San Diego. We started at Stone. We ordered all the beers based on their alcohol content, and I broke my thumb. <laughs> and then I got really, really drunk, and I broke my thumb. Like I ordered the highest ABV on the menu everywhere I went, and that was how a lot of people would fucking go. Yeah. Just like, oh yeah, I remember going to places early on and be like, yeah, what's the coolest, highest, like, basically cool equated to highest ABV. For a while there, it felt like yeah. Can, I did you, that can with, you handle it? Yeah, I did yeah. that with spirits when I first started. Like it was just like, oh, what's the weirdest, shittiest, craziest shot with you know, I'm, like one fifty one and fucking yeah. whatever. Oh yeah, we we did we we had the Everclear back in the day in yeah. college. That was a mess. But I do remember you one of the uh, anniversary parties. Somebody brought Sink the Bismarck. Thing. Oh was, yeah, that was uh, Brew Dogs. What was that forty forty one percent? Yeah, I think. I think yeah. it, and I had that, and it would literally somebody had it in a paper bag. And it was like somebody was pouring a little bit of like a little malt liquor on the side. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Bismarck, and what See, was the other one? Tactical was, um, Nuclear ta- Penguin. Yeah, better name for sure. But TNP man, I remember one of them being Ooh. not god awful, just bad, and the other one being god awful. Sink the Bismarck was like very salty. Yeah, like. It was fucking salty. Uh, TNP was basically like uh, boozy licorice. It Speaking was... of boozy licorice, it smells like boozy jam. All right, so this is uh, Jam the Radar from 2018 from Bottle Logic Brewing. Uh, they just came out with this year's version of uh, Jam the Radar, um, I think a week ago um, or less. Uh, so, yeah. I think this is a variant on Dark Star. If I remember it, correctly. it is packaged similarly, yeah. so it's it's hard for me to really keep track of all of the different variants that Bottle Logic is putting out. I can keep track of maybe their stickers. I love yeah. the Chandler Radar <laughs> stickers, but that's that's kind of it these days. Yeah, it's it's a barrel aged beer. So, yeah, um, and yeah. Bottle well, Logic knows how to make beer. Only one beer. only one person would give us the raspberry. <laughs> 
I just uh, threw that one up there for you. Yes. <laughs> well, and, and even and even the. Uh, <laughs> It's very Thank good. You. Good good space balls reference. I'm um, 99% certain that's like what they're talking John's about. John's blank yeah. face makes me really sad right now. Well, seeing that gif it makes sense now. I I get it. I don't know that I don't know the the reference, but I, I get the Star. reference for the beer. It's like literally the radar goes out and like this happens and then it comes down <laughs> out of the like, view screen. <laughs> out of the screen the it starts rolling down they're like it's raspberry jam. Only one, one person would dare give me the raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense now. Classy. <laughs> I'm almost certain that's a reference. I that. hope so. Knowing, it's if it's be. not, then there's no knowing those dudes. Like oh, it's man. their kind of joke. It's their jam, if you would. <laughs> so this is boozy. Mm. Yeah. Um, I like it though. It, it just smell wise, right away. I it smells like Bottle Logic. Like smelling their barrel aged beers and smelling their their like darker stouts. This is a hundred percent Bottle Logic. Yeah, for I me. get that from the brewery. Like the brewery has their own like aroma when mm-hmm. it comes to every beer they yep. make. Yep, you can kind of nail it. Ooh, the thing is Ooh. though with this is this is the kind of beer I'd open up and I would leave out for probably an hour, two hours, and then just keep kind of you oh, know God. drinking some of the bottle, and it'd be Yum. it would warm up to sort of like room ish <laughs> temp, and that's when I would probably enjoy it the most. Like it's it's so good. I feel like there's seeds in my teeth. I know, like, right? This is so jammy. And it's a year old. Holy shit. <laughs> That's really, really awesome. Okay, so aroma is boozy. Um, Boo- cho- boozy chocolate, with a Chocolate hint. booze. And I think this is the appropriate temperature, too, because this has been sitting out the whole time. Yeah. So it's probably around 55, 60 degrees. And do you guys not have one of those laser thermometers? Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> I do. I actually have one in the car. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, instead of checking the temperatures of my tires, I can check oh, the temperature man. of the beer. <laughs> it's so rich. <laughs> mm. I don't love raspberry like on my best day. I want to so. eat, eat some bread with this and have like a sandwich. It's jammy. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So Jason, no go. I just don't love raspberry, period. So it's not that the beer is bad. It's just like, yeah, it's oh, a I flavor. I wish I would have known that. It's not that my sucks. favorite flavor. Mm. You know what I would do? I'd, I'd get like a peanut butter jar, get a spoon, and just like... Get a little bit of like a chunky peanut butter going and then drink some of this beer. <laughs> Want to do it? And kind of. Yeah, yeah a little bit. Bit. I'll be right back. Let's do it. Is it that kind you got to mix? Probably. <laughs> the kind with the oil on top and Adam's? Yeah. Of course he is. It's like, of course, John. Goddamn oil and separated if, peanut. If we're talking about pairings, that's, that's A number one. Be good. Jam. I'm not great at pairing. I just am like... My favorite thing with my favorite thing. I don't care if they match. I did 12 days of a beer and a cheese and on untapped. And it was it was a lot yeah. um, to try and figure out. I mean, I was pretty much making stuff up right. as, as I went along. But you can, you can sort of... So on some cheese websites, they will recommend beer. Often, they'll recommend a cider because a cider usually is one either used to... Um, they'll like age the cheese basically in a cider and you'll get sort of that like apple cider quality okay. washed right yeah. to it or the lightness of the cider pairs really well with a goat cheese or you know something that's a little more smoky i'm fighting off a sneeze yeah i was like and it didn't go i was i was gonna say look at look into one of the studio lights but they're they're not on right now we can just dead air it's fine Nobody's listening anyways. Nobody even likes the show. Mm-hmm. You guys are here. I love you guys. It's, easy, it's easier in the edit, that's for sure. Right. <laughs> Spaceballs the lunchbox. Spaceballs the flamethrower. Oh, toothpick. Damn. Not getting legit. All right. Mm. Peanut butter and audio. <laughs> Didn't think of that, but yeah, seriously, that is. Oh my gosh, that's that is so good. That's pretty good. It's like PB and J, dude. That is spectacular. Oh my god, it is. <laughs> that does work really well. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I'm here for it now. 
Bottle logic. We know you listen to the show. <laughs> I like how you just went from like, I don't like raspberries to I'm totally here. That's a really All good. All I needed was peanut butter. That's really good. Can we get some bread? <laughs> I just, yeah. What if you, what if you, could you mm. like soak the bread in, I don't know. But this, actually, this peanut butter is spectacular too. The whatever What if this, you like took just like the bread, <laughs> soaked it in peanut butter. Yeah, the, in the beer. And then cooked it in a pan with the beer and then put sugar on it. So. <laughs> I'm not high. But yeah. see, that's no. that's the thing with this sorry, with this beer. It's not very sweet. It's you're getting the fruit and and the sort of like just it is all berries. Like it's oops, oops, bottle logic all berries. <laughs> oops, all berries. It's I agree. The the peanut butter really helps cut that like perceived sweetness you're getting from all the jamminess from the beer. Yep. And it kind of distracts you from like the bigness of the beer too. Um, it's really good. But it just shows how jammy the beer is because like peanut butter and jelly is a thing because like those two things work together. Like you have a, a salty nuttiness paired with a fruity mm-hmm. sugariness that kind of cancel each other out and it tastes really good and savory. Yep. And that's. Tim stirring a toothpick. Are you mixing in the peanut butter? Oh yeah, <laughs> a noble peanut and biggins even the smallest beer. Oh my god, does it work? It mellows it out a bit. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's funny. But yeah. what of the head retention? I mean, oh. now it's a little chunky. It's yeah, a little, yeah, it's a little, it's a little gross. Get, get get the other end in there. You use the chopsticks. You couldn't, yeah, uh, you, you couldn't method. serve this and have it be palatable. No, yeah, it's. Uh, that's, that's legit peanut butter. It's like actually just ground up peanuts. So, but combine, it works. Yeah, the the peanut butter pairing with this beer. It's it. Seriously, we had a toothpick worth. So maybe, how much would that be? Like, a quarter teaspoon of peanut butter. Not even for a sip. Yeah, yeah. like really good. I'm saying you take a piece of bread with peanut butter on it, and like you nibble on it, and then drink the beer. Yeah, no, that would yep, be a perfect combo. I would call that a master pairing. There you go. Yeah. Throwback. <laughs> so uh, I did not expect this beer to hold up as well as it did, and it held up very, very well. So um, if you have Kudos a bottle, bottle of logic. I really think this beer is peaked, though. Like, yeah. I wouldn't hang on to it much longer because who knows what's going to happen after this point. It might just turn into, like, a jelly. So I would say almost every beer I've ever aged, like, a year is about the max. You're going to get anything good out of it, and it's just getting worse after that. Yeah. So you're telling me the 2012 I have sitting in my office is no good? Yeah. No, it's not All the 2010 beers I have sitting in my closet are all garbage. I guarantee, <laughs> I guarantee it. I really think when it comes to, like, Belgian beers, like, authentic Belgian beers or beers that are made with, like, that Belgian um, style, um, those hold up far longer than, like, American-style beers. Like, just yeah. with... Bottle-conditioned beers are better. I had a Westy 12 that from the original like uh, batch that they shipped and sold in America uh, a month ago. The the hype assassin batch, and it was good. It was Just still it assassinated was... like overnight. It went from holy shit, this is the whale of all whales to like yeah, who cares? Ah, well. It's crazy. It's it. it just weird watching how beer hype works. Just no, I get it. Yeah, the moment the rarity went away and it was like everybody got to try it, it was like I don't know the the Westy the Westy Twelve episode of our show actually is one of the high, most downloaded that we've done. Really, I don't think I heard that show actually. What was it? A Westy Twelve from Westy, or was it like the American? It it was uh, it was an older Westy Twelve. Mm-hmm. It was from I think it was from the uh, when they did the set. The um, Total Wine did the um... oh, so it was the American that was four the five one that was years released ago? here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it, it was not from the um, the Abbey. No, it was. That one, right? It looked yeah, like yeah, that one. That yep. exact, yep. Of course, you have it in your fucking closet. Yeah, it was that guy. We opened that up, and that was what that was one of our yeah, highest downloaded shows. That's the one I opened, and it still holds up. Yeah, very yeah, well. I thought it was, and it had I, some oxidation on it, but I mean, you're gonna get that, and it's it's fine. But it was it was really good. Didn't you throw yeah. one at us blind? I did. Yeah, yeah Ooh, funny. that'd be fun. We did like a going in blind, and John's like. What do you guys think of this beer? <laughs> He's like giggling to himself. <laughs> Waiting for you guys to shit on it. Right. That was in the other room too, the smaller yeah, room. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. Well, uh, Tim and Kyle, thanks for hanging out. Oh, I, yeah. I hope you guys had fun. We yeah, did, for sure. It was really cool talking about Untapped and the whole history and our 
catch up after God knows how long. Yeah, well, eight, nine years at this point. So um, thanks for driving all the way out to my house to hang out with us because I know it's a drive. It's a pain in the ass. It's fine, man. You're awesome. And it was cool to be here. Yeah, seriously. Thank you for having us. Lay more praises on me. Keep coming. Bring it. it, Bring it. Very good. Love every (laughs) every bit of it. Thanks for bringing all the uh, Oh My Gang. Yeah. Hey, Hey, you know what? You're welcome. Your blind and your blind tasting was really <laughs> cool. Right. I think all the shows were pretty solid. Like uh, good set. We didn't have any like a lot of dud beers, really. No. Like there's times when it's like, yeah, this just isn't. Tasty. Just that right. one toppling Goliath one. That was it. Oh, but well, we knew we knew going into that. <laughs> yeah, we're like, <laughs> your face was the best I see. It was just like, hey, Point Dexter, you got the dud. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that might just get cut out altogether. So I don't know. Anyway, anyway thanks anyway. guys. Oh um, yeah, hope to have you on. Hope to have you on sometime soon. Maybe next year. Maybe in another eight years. No, hopefully not. Wow, eight years, I'll be... Don't think about it. It's 47. We're going to run out of people we know pretty soon, so we're going to need you guys to come back. <laughs> I'm, I'll be, I'm free. Hey, yeah, if, I'm I'm, not, I'm, if I'm not I'm traveling, I'm, come op- back. I'm yep. open. Cool. Yep. Well, I'll, I'll invite you down, Tim. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to find us online, we are at fourbrewers.com. Uh, you can find all of our links to everything there, uh, our photos, our, our social medias, everything all of that stupid stuff. Uh, go to support the shit out of it.com to give us your money. Uh, hit us up on Twitter at Four Brewers Show. Uh, go to Instagram at Four Brewers if you want to see our tasty photos and our awesome Instagram stories, I guess. Uh, go to twitch.tv slash the number four brewers to see our live streams. Uh, leave only five star reviews on iTunes and give us a star in Overcast if you use Overcast for iOS. And uh, send all negative or positive feedback, or if you want to send us beer or anything else, um, do that at feedback at fourbrewers.com and brew the shit out of it.